Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Docker. Uh, my name is Tibor Vass. I'm a software engineer on the open source side at Docker. And so I'm actively working on the Mobi project right now, which is the subject of my talk. So what is the Mobi project? We've introduced that at DockerCon uh, this year. It's basically an open framework to assemble specialized container systems without reinventing the wheel, which may seem like a generic thing, but I'll explain with more detail. First of all, let me talk about the problem. Problem is um, doc the Docker engine started to grow into like a big monolith, and it's the problem with monoliths is that it's hard to change. You have various uh, user uh, use use cases, user requirements, and not all of them will, will be satisfied. And the best way to, uh, to solve that problem is to break down into components. That's the Unix philosophy of doing one thing and one thing well. So um, basically the ecosystem is bigger than Docker itself. So you might, you might like Docker, but not everything about Docker. You might like um, certain parts of it, and you'd like to reuse it with other components. So that's what uh, I'll show you later on in a couple use cases, and that's also what Riaz will demo in more detail. Uh, and finally, project versus product. I just want to quickly touch on this. Um, it's very hard to, um, to satisfy good user experience a very product-focused, um, um, uh, sorry. It's very hard to satisfy uh, user requirements when we want, a, we want a good user experience and at the same time satisfy uh, the ecosystem in an open project uh, like the Docker project was. Um, because usually with open source, uh, in the open source project, we want to, we want to add all kinds of features um, and it doesn't always necessarily make sense to add them. We have to think about how it makes sense with the other features. Um, and so Mobi is also a way to, to give more, um, to give, to give more uh, life to the project itself. It's actually the maintainers, Docker maintainers, who were asking us, um, how, can we, how can we make this more, um, how can we make this more open, and how can we, um, how can we add more features without impacting the product? So what this means for you, first of all, there are two kinds of audiences here I wanna address. The first is Docker users. I wanna make it clear that it will not impact you directly. This Mobi project will only impact you indirectly by allowing more innovation to happen by swapping components here and there, and the best components will win, and it will just we will just incorporate the best components within Docker, and so innovation will make things better for you as a Docker user. If you're a system builder, then Mobi will help you with the, with the innovation without tying you to Docker, so you can reuse components. So very briefly, I can give you a, an example here, what, what I mean uh, with an assembly of components. So here you have a locked down Linux uh, system. So we use, for instance, InfraKit here to provision a, uh, a OS that was based on LinuxKit, uh, which Riaz will be talking more about. That's a new, uh, it's a new open source component we open sourced at DockerCon, and it allows you to assemble your custom OS. And on top of that, we run container D, but all these components, which are containers themselves, um, are verified through notary. So you, you're, you're, a te you're sure that what you, um, what you assembled comes from trusted components. So this is like a very basic uh, assembly. You just have Linux Git and Containerd, and that's it. Um, here's a more uh, complex uh, assembly. You could do the same thing, and on top of that, install uh, a Docker builder, a registry, um, 
have a whole CI/CD stack with uh, Jenkins, uh, InfluxDB, and Grafana. Um, and then you're like, this is cool, but I don't want to use Infracator Linux Kit because I already have uh, these other components that I know better. So could I swap that to, say, Terraform and Debian? And that's the kind of innovation we want to encourage. Um, basically, you're allowed to mix and match the components you want and, um, and uh, yeah, to, to your liking without tying you to Docker. Again, I want to make it clear that these three assemblies I'm talking about, these are for system builders. This, uh, if you're a Docker user, you're probably never going to use any of this. You would just use Docker directly. So this is for system builders, for system builders, and for system builders. Um, finally, I want to I want to touch on one last thing, which um, some of you may have heard. There had to there there was some kind of confusion around the Moby project uh, announcement. Um, for instance, there were tweets like this one. Um, so very, very briefly, I just want to uh, uh, resolve those misconceptions. So was Docker renamed to Moby? The answer is no. Do like if you use Docker, like I said, um, like I said earlier, if you're a Docker user and you use Docker, you keep using Docker. There's no, no problem. You won't have to change all of a sudden to use the Moby CLI or any of any of that. Uh, so no, uh, what happened is the Docker repository where uh, the, the project and both the project and the product uh, were, um, were hosted got renamed to Moby so that we can start componentizing the Docker engine itself. And another question is, so now that uh, there's this Moby project and Docker, does that mean that the Docker engine is now closed source and the Moby one is the open source one? And like, no, again, the answer is no. Docker engine is uh, not closed source. It remains open source. What happens is the Docker CLI uh, is split out to its own repository. So it's at docker slash uh, github.com slash docker slash CLI. And, um, and it's still open source. You can still send pull requests. Um, and on the Moby side, uh, it's, it's, all of it is open source. So you just continue sending pull requests there. So I just want to make this very clear that uh, as a Docker user, you shouldn't worry. Things won't break. You don't have to change anything. Uh, it's, mo it's mostly if you're a system builder and you want to participate um, uh, by helping, in helping to innovate in this space. So uh, with that, I want to thank you for listening to me. And put some links. If you want to help us with the transition uh, to, to, the, to componentizing the Docker engine, um, you can join us at the, the Docker community Slack on Moby Project, and we'll soon have also a mailing list. Uh, also, I put the website for the Moby Project um, if you want to learn more. And without further ado, I think you can, I can uh, pass it on to Riaz, who's going to talk to you about Linux Kit and how, Moby, how the Moby tool actually started inside Docker um, to help us with Linux Kit. So thank you. Thanks, Tibor. All right, so. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Riaz. I'm a security engineer here at Docker. And I want to follow up uh, from Tibor's talk on Moby Project to introduce Linux Kit, uh, which was our newest project open sourced at DockerCon. Um, and so to set the stage, Tibor mentioned how Moby assembles uh, components. And so if you think about the Moby whale we all know and love, uh, you can split it up into these components. And you may be familiar with a bunch of these components today. So if you're familiar with InfraKit, uh, which you open sourced last year, Notary, SwarmKit, ContainerD, RunC, these are all components that together build the Docker platform. And are, you can use Moby to assemble. And the latest addition. Uh, to these components uh, is Linux Kit, um, which I, as a security engineer, want to frame as the most secure OS builder uh, for your containers. And let me deep dive into what exactly Linux Kit is. So at its core, Linux Kit gives you a minimal base. Um, so it has 
a modern, uh, securely configured kernel where we've been collaborating with the Kernel Self Protection Project uh, and actively working to upstream fixes uh, like namespacing, uh, integrity measurement architecture, hardening, extended Berkeley packet filtering uh, to the upstream kernel. So we want to give you a, a modern kernel that, again, you can swap out uh, as part of the Mobi project, but is in Linux kit. Um, and also we've taken a bunch of the hardened build chain and user space tools from Alpine Linux. Um, and all of these user space tools actually run in containers. So if you poke around with Linux kit, and we'll get into a demo where I can show you in more detail, uh, we actually take system demons like DHCP uh, from Alpine and run them in containers in a least privileged fashion in your Linux kit based OS. So at the core, it's a minimal base uh, on which you can run containers. And on top of that, it's a minimal base, but it's also an immutable one. So we have a read only root file system. Uh, and Linux kit really is wanting to push forward the idea of immutable infrastructure. Um, and so what that means in Linux kit is that you have a reduced attack surface where attackers can't overwrite sensitive configs because they're read only, and likewise can't mess with any of your executables because, again, read only root file system. And as Tibor alluded to, uh, we've actually been using Linux kit under the hood uh, in Docker, if you've been using Docker for Mac, uh, Windows, AWS, Azure, uh, across all of our addition platforms. Uh, we've actually been shipping Linux kit based OSs. And so it's been in use uh, by millions of users, and we've learned many lessons about what exactly the minimal base uh, of a Linux based OS you need for Docker and how we can harden it to bring you a lean and secure based OS. And while we're interested in securing Linux Kit and Linux Today, we also have an eye to the future and want to incubate many exciting uh, kernel security projects uh, that are bound to be upstreamed. Uh, a couple I want to highlight are the Landlock LSM. So if you're familiar with SE Linux and AppArmor, those are LSM's Linux security modules. Landlock makes use of a very modern kernel feature uh, called extended Berkeley packet filters to have very robust uh, filtering of activity on the host. So that's enabled by Linux Kit having a modern kernel. So it's a nice place for us to experiment. Uh, another project I'd like to highlight is a WireGuard, which is a modern uh, secure VPN uh, that can revolutionize host and container networking. And again, since we have our kernel that we ship with Linux Kit, uh, it, Linux Kit is a great place to incubate the project uh, and give it a spin with Docker containers and other setups. Additionally, we're also working with a bunch of partners on some really exciting projects, uh, which are on the slide. One other exciting project is uh, HPE's uh, split kernel called OKernel. There's actually a demo at DockerCon in Justin Cormack's talk, if you want to take a look, uh, where they've been working on splitting the kernel into inner and outer kernels, depending on how uh, privileged different parts of the kernel are. So I encourage you to check out that talk. Uh, another project within Linux Kit that we want to really drive forward is to rewrite all of the system daemons in type safe languages, such as OCaml and Rust. Uh, and the reason why I have OCaml on the slide is that actually today, if you go to the Linux Kit repo, we have a working uh, OCaml-based DHCP uh, client that actually makes use of Mirage OS, which is basically a unikernel builder. And so today you can uh, build a Linux kit based OS running a type safe unikernel uh, DHCP daemon. So it's, it's pretty cool. And if you're a Rust OCaml hacker, uh, I encourage you to take a look and we love to work together. So now that I've just kind of described Linux kit at a high level, uh, I want to just show you maybe what it looks like in code if you want. So maybe it's time for a demo. So, is this big enough? Yeah, so this is the Linux kit repo. If you uh, git clone uh, github.com slash Linux kit Linux kit, this is it. Uh, one thing I wanna show you, which is uh, 
we showed a DockerCon, but I want to deep dive into here, is we have this examples directory. And we have a bunch of recipes for assemblies. Um, so like Tibor mentioned, uh, with Moby, you can assemble your own systems. Uh, and here we have a bunch of examples, uh, primarily focused around Linux Kit. Um, and today I want to show you the Red SOS one. So let's take a look. They're all YAML files. So this is what it looks like, um, an assembly to use with Moby. I mentioned that with Linux Kit, we provide a kernel. Um, so we have the kernel here, and this is actually an image on Docker Hub. So if you wanted to Docker pull this, you could. Um, you wouldn't really be able to do much with it unless you use the Moby tool because of how we package things, uh, but it's all on Hub. Uh, likewise, we have some init processes where init, all it really does is set up container D so you can run containers. And then we have our services. So here I have DCP so I can have networking. Uh, I have Redis. So I can show you a Redis uh, Moby assembly system. And that's it. Um, and I just tell it to output a kernel in a NIT rig. So this is what a very simple minimal Linux kit based OS for running Redis would look like. Um, and to show you how this works, I'm going to use, I have a Moby tool here. This is what the Moby CLI looks like. Uh, you have a build. So I'm going to just do a uh, Moby build on the Redis OS example. And so here what we're doing is, is building uh, by pulling all of these images from Hub um, and then packaging them into this red SOS kernel init rid image command line, which we see here. And now if I want to show you how this runs and boots, we have a Linux kit tool for running Linux kit based OSs. This can do bit Linux kit run OS. So in a few seconds, I have my OS. That's it. Um, just to show you kind of some of the Features of Linux kit based OS is um, read only file system when I try to touch something. Uh, to show you what's running, the only things that are really running here are my two containers that I specified in my YAML, um, which is HTTP and Redis. Um, and to show you that Redis is actually running, uh, I can do uh, NC localhost, I think it's 6379. This is Redis's port, and it's listening. So I do a ping, and I get a pop. So that's just Redis. So, and all I have in this OS is just Redis and DHCP, nothing else. Um, so I guess that's what a basic Linux kit assembly using Moby uh, looks like. So I powered that down. So that was a basic example, but I think with Moby and all our components uh, and all the features that Linuxkit provides, we can have some much more interesting combinations. So I want to just run through a few and their security properties since I'm a security engineer. Um, so firstly, uh, if you're familiar with Notary, which is our image signing and verification system, it actually fits really well into Linuxkit because all of our dependencies for our Linux kit YAML or Docker images. So they can all be signed. So we can use Notary to actually sign off, and we do this today on our kernel init and our packages, to sign off on all of our images so that when we pull from Docker Hub, we're doing a trusted pull. We are sure that the image is authentic, uh, it passes integrity checks, and also with Notary, we have freshness guarantees, getting the, the latest image. And so in your Linux kit based OS, you're doing trusted pulls uh, to basically get a cryptographically verified build. And this is a really cool way that we can bring together Notary and Linux Kit two component projects. So another way you could use Linux Kit is as a base OS builder to run Docker on. And what's interesting is that Docker will actually run inside a container D container in Linux Kit. And so in doing so, you actually can limit the capabilities that Docker runs with, namespace Docker, and run it in a least privileged fashion. So Linux Kit and Docker actually work really nicely together. Um, and I guess some backstory here too is from Docker for Mac and Windows, AWS Azure, uh, 
it's kind of where Linux Kit was born and where this combination of Docker and Linux Kit really came to be. So another combination with Linux Kit. Uh, another combination I'd like to call out is Linux Kit plus InfraKit uh, for OS updates. And the reason why this is important is that Linux Kit is immutable, uh, which means that it can't update itself. You need a trusted external provisioner to update since it's immutable infrastructure. And this actually can lead to some very important and interesting security properties. And one I want to share with you today is the idea of reverse uptime. Uh, what reverse uptime is, is if you're familiar with uptime, uh, counting up from how long a machine has been alive for, usually for health like checking, uh, reverse uptime is instead of counting up, you're counting down from a given lifetime for that OS. Say a week, a month, here I put 10 minutes. And the idea is that since you have an immutable infrastructure OS, you should be able to pull out, uh, to basically destroy that OS and to redeploy a new golden image that you've blessed and have built using immutable infrastructure. And this is really important for three reasons. So firstly, uh, letting OSs stay alive for a very long time and be mutable, uh, you're susceptible to configuration drift, OS drift, where your configurations may change in unexpected ways, lead to unexpected downtime, and you have to figure out why one system is doing one thing and why another isn't. So reverse uptime and constantly refreshing with new golden images with the configs as part of that mutual infrastructure uh, helps you prevent this. Secondly, you want frequent kernel updates because with kernel patches come security fixes. And there are many, many bugs that live in the kernel for many years and finally get patched um, you know, at some point in time. And you want to make sure that your infrastructure get those patches. So you want to be frequently updating your kernel to ensure that you're up to date. And finally, with reverse uptime, if an attacker happens to get a backdoor into your infrastructure, reverse uptime removes persistence by redeploying, uh, by destroying that old OS that they've infiltrated and redeploying a new one, you're making their lives much more difficult to stay in your data center and pivot around and do evil things. And so reverse uptime with immutable infrastructure uh, is a really interesting idea that we want to push forward with Linux Kit and InfraKit and other components in the Moby project. So now that we have InfraKit plus Linux Kit, uh, let's also throw in Notary and get to this idea of cryptographically verified boot. So we have InfraKit to revenge Linux, Linux Kit, uh, but one really interesting kernel feature uh, that's fairly recent to Linux is this idea or this feature called DM Verity, where you have essentially a hash tree of all the blocks of the system that come together in a Merkle tree where you hash together pairwise into a single root hash. And that root hash describes the state of the system, of the entire OS. And so this, this DM Verity sets up against this root hash. And so what you can do is have InfraKit on provisioning with reverse uptime give you this root hash. But then you might ask, okay, how do I get this root hash in the first place in a trusted manner? And well, that's where Notary comes in. And so Notary, as our signing system that gives you a hash from a name or a version, can provide the root hash to InfraKit, which can help provide the root hash to Linux Kit to set up features like DM Verity, where you have full integrity over the system itself. And so finally, what happens when we bring together Run C, ContainerD, Docker, SwarmKit, Notary, InfraKit, Linux Kit, all of our components? Well, we get a secure by default infrastructure where we can have Linux Kit provide hardened uh, base OS, configuring your components, InfraKit providing a secure boot uh, using Notary, and then building on top of that uh, using Docker and SwarmKit and all the security features of secure by default SC Linux, App Armor, Capability Drops, uh, Secrets in SwarmKit, uh, and Mutual TLS by default to bring you a secure by default infrastructure using Moby to bring them all together. So I'd like to take this opportunity to show you kind of all the pieces coming together 
using Moby and InfraKit Notary Linux Kit uh, with a demo. So on the right, I have a single node swarm. Um, so for those who are maybe not as familiar with swarm, swarm is our clustering uh, project here at Docker where you have uh, multiple nodes join the same container orchestrator cluster. And we have a manager here, which is administrating the swarm. Uh, and on the left, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to build a custom landscape-based OS uh, that makes use of the cryptographic boot example that we showed with the few pieces coming together that will join the swarm um, and in doing so get a node identity in the swarm so that we can securely deploy a service with secrets uh, altogether. So, uh, let me show you, I have a uh, YAML that I'm going to use to build. And so I do, um, let me build YAML. And so again, uh, all these images are signed. So actually as I'm extracting these images and pulling down these images, I'm actually doing a trusted verification of from Docker Hub. Uh, am I getting the right image? Is it fresh? Uh, and doing a a pull by digest from Notary. And I have a bunch of, much more images in this one, um, including Docker here. So now I have my outputs, my nitrid uh, kernel command line. And if I do a Moby run, give this one a disk. We'll see is the same boot up sequence we saw earlier. I've added a few extra prints when we get to uh, the DM Verity cryptographic boot provisioning. So we'll see in just a second. So DM Verity setup. We'll soon see the system itself report what it sees as its, as its state. Um, so you'll see a root hash here. So root hash is 18 cd and notary provisions the same hashed. Uh, to the same system. So everything boots fine. Uh, boot, we have a shell. Everything is good. And as I mentioned earlier, Docker is actually running in a container. So if I look here, I'm hitting Docker, I'm not going to get anything. Uh, but if I do run C, exec, it's T, Docker SH. Now I'm in a container. If I do Docker info, I have the Docker. Uh, output here. And this Docker has a node ID uh, because it's actually joined the swarm as a worker. So now what I can do is I have a simple service with a stack file and compose file. If I do a Docker stack deploy, we'll create a service which will deploy containers across these two hosts. Also provision secrets, which will be you know, encrypted. Um, we'll see this actually start to get some debug output. Get some container scheduled to it. Oops. Sorry, maybe on that one, but here we have one. We have our service deployed using all of the components we had, bringing together and using the Moby tool, which people were introduced earlier, to assemble this for us. So I guess. That's our end-to-end -end Moby project assembly of Linux kit based OS with Notary, Docker, Swarmkit, InfraKit, all bringing it together. So uh, thank you very much. So I think we are open for questions this time. Yeah, yep. one question here. In the uh, YAML file that you had, you have, um, the various components that you're bringing in, colon, and then a very long string. Yep. Where does that string come from? Yes, so that string is is the tag for the image. So if you're familiar with like like Docker Alpine, like Docker pull Alpine latest, uh, our tags, we've actually, we may change it soon, but we have the idea of reproducible tags. So idea being we take for each image, there's a set of dependencies that we want to pull in uh, as build components. So like, for example, for DCP, we have the, the binary and the config. 
we actually run it through a SHA, SHA-1, uh, and use it as the tag. So that's why it's a really long, weird string, is it's just a SHA-1 of the components we use to build it when we push it up to Hub. Yeah, they could be tagged to anything else. Yep. And I think also to your point, um, there are in the examples, uh, we have also some like nice shortened strings that are, we've, we've tagged both with the hash that we can use internally for reproducible builds, but also like a user-friendly like kernel 4.9.27. Uh, so I have a I have a container which is deploying a kernel module to basically monitor all the system calls that are emitted by the application. So if I build a uh, if I use Linux kit and I deploy a kernel module, what system calls will be monitored? Will it be the system calls going to Linux kit or to the host? I guess it would depend on how you uh, how you hook it up in the YAML file. Uh, I think it should be to the landscape itself. Okay. I guess it depends on how. Yeah, it should be just landscape itself. Nice. Yeah. So if I have to monitor something that is going to the host, yep. is there a way I could do that? Right. So you could run the same kernel module or same logging solution on the underlying host as well. Um, so Linux Kit, I showed using HyperKit. Um, which is another project. I didn't want to introduce it. There's a lot of points already. Uh, that basically spun up a VM, a uh, Linux kit. We have, um, in the Linux kit repo, we have different outputs. Um, and so one of them is we've, we've been running uh, Linux kit on bare metal on packet.net. Um, and so in that case, it would be just Linux kit. And so you would have like the host Got would it. be Linux kit. In this case, I have my host Mac and I have Linux kit on top. Yeah. And so you'd need to run it on the underlying Mac. I think it's uh, is there a place for uh, system D in Linux kit because I didn't really see any in it I mean I saw your init process but I don't see any upstart or system D in there yeah so we don't think we need system D um, the reason why is that our NIT is only container D uh, Linux kit itself is minimal it doesn't even have a package manager uh, the idea is that you declaratively before in your YAML file provide all the dependencies you need um, in the form of containers and can customize however you'd like there. Um, Linux kit itself doesn't need extra uh, dependency and... Uh, like I mean, it, is this the model management. for like unikernels or is this your idea of like container D taking the place of system D? Yeah, so, so uh, the only place that unikernels are in Linux kit are if, for example, the DHCP uh, container. So you can include unit kernels there. Uh, the, yeah, container D as our, as our init is, is how uh, Linux kit uses it and how our Docker editions leverage Linux kit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But sorry, I just want to touch a little bit on that. I think it'd be quite interesting actually to, to have a system D component and then somehow uh, assemble it. Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah, to see which point, if you wanted to combine, like bring in your own, so everything is pluggable, so including the init, if you wanted to in your YAML files. If you really, really wanted systemd, you could have an init systemd um, if you wanted to, but. Uh, that might yeah. require some work, though. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not out of the box, but. Yep. Yeah. A question over here? Or I think you want the Sorry. mic? No problem. Just so we have a. Yeah. Is, is Moby beta release or a general release to run Moby as? Is Moby, yeah. Is Moby generally, yeah, Moby is, Moby is generally released. Oh, okay. Uh, Linux kit is open source. We did, all the components uh, that we demoed are open source. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's say I'm using Checkpoint Restore from, from the experimental uh, version of Docker. Uh, do I see any impact on, on, if I use it on the containers which are built 
using Linux Kit, or how, how, is, how do you see that player going forward? Yeah. Um, I need to get back to you on, I, I know we you discussed if there's any impact on template restore. I don't think there is, uh, but it'd be good to follow up. Um, I mean, if there is any issue, then please file an issue on, <laughs> on the repo and we can. What kind of impact are you, yeah. are you thinking of? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, my question is that like, can I, can I continue to run checkpoint restore for containers built out of Linux kit? Like, using Docker or using, using Linux kit? Using Docker. Yeah, like yeah. like I said earlier, if you're using Docker, not nothing should change. So keep using Docker. So if we have a checkpoint restore, oh, I, maybe I understand your question. Your question was, since checkpoint restore is experimental and it's not in stable yet, um, will it be in stable or are we changing our minds? And is that your question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I do not know the answer to that. Um, I know there are some problems with Checkpoint Restore with uh, regarding the file system itself because the only thing you're checkpointing are uh, basically process in the memory, right? But you, all, you might also want to you might also want to uh, use the file system that you have. So there might be basically the, it's not finalized. That's why it's an experimental. That doesn't mean it's not going to be in Docker, and I think it's independent from Linux Git. But if uh, to answer another way your question, if you want to use Checkpoint Restore, which is in Container D, uh, and you want to you want to assemble your own assembly with Mobi uh, with Container D, then you can use Checkpoint Restore directly with Container D. Sorry, I'm from a different generation, uh, and I'm trying to figure out what this is. Just for. talk to the... Uh, uh, where? Yeah. <laughs> to the, the top. top. You can yeah. hear me okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, sorry, that was a little flustering. Uh, okay. I don't mean to be to bring up something that I, I, I hear a lot about in the community. I don't care. But um, one of the things that comes up regularly when, when you talk about some of these more integrated systems with Docker, kind of moving into where the territory that system D, I think there was kind of a question that was leading to this earlier, is that um, one of the things that system D ended up having to do as a replacement for an init system was build many other kinds of components. Um, wasn't it like DHCP that they had to build and these kinds of things? Do you imagine um, Linux kit kind of growing into that space or reusing components. How are you going to um, blaze a path that might be just slightly different than system D? So that kind of, how do I put it, uh, overly generalized comparison between system D and, and this system can be kind of avoided and, and maybe you've learned from things in the past. Sorry, I rambled. That's I'm not used to the cube. <laughs> I'm not using the microphone, actually. Yeah, um, I think one thing to be clear is that Linux Kit isn't an OS, right? It's a, it's a, it's components to build an OS, and Mobi Tool helps you build it. Right? And we've been using Linux Kit for Docker Mac, Windows, AWS, Azure, across millions of users. So, I mean, I also, I'm. I'm Maintainer of Linux Kit, so I'm, I'm biased. Um, no, no I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Um, so, I, I'm pretty happy with the direction we've been going in. I think it's, it's simple, um, it's worked, yeah. um, and we're happy to work with the community. If there's issues, and we, again, it's pluggable. It's all components. So if folks want to customize in it, and have their own Docker image and on Hub and use it in your YAML file. Works, um, and, it, and that's part of the Mobi project, right? It's you can build your own assemblies, and so Docker additions are one assembly, and they're an opinionated assembly. Right. Um, other folks may have other assemblies, um, and so I think we've we've been very happy with the architecture of Linux Kit uh, based OSs. Uh, so I yeah I don't have any more there. Um, no, I'm fine with that. So you're it, it, mixer understood. You're saying well, look, this is maybe a more foundation 
a little bit more foundational than say what system B was, was aspiring to, to be? I don't know if I want to make any broad claim about more foundational or okay. I think it's Sorry. it's uh, it's uh, Linuskit gives you components. Yeah, the, the, the way I look at it is <clears throat> if, if you're a Docker user and you want to use uh, you know, as our Docker products, you can do that. If for some reason you don't like one component of it or you you, you want to customize it in a, in a very specific way. That's why we wanna we wanna have the Mobi project where you can you can reuse some of our component you can reuse our components as well as other components that are coming into your own kind of assemblies. And if you're not happy with that, you can either just use ContainerD on its own uh, if if you want to do containers. And if you're still unhappy with that, then you can just use uh, OCI or Run C, um, OCI specific OCI compliant. Um, uh, binaries just such as Run C, and so like you have this layered spectrum of uh, of uh, I don't know. Like yeah, you have layers of an onion. I'm sorry. Layers of an onion. Like layers of an onion, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That uh, that's how I view it. At least. Okay. Thank you very much.